Yo, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Today, we've got a Smite 2 video dedicated to starter items. And should they be added into the game? Should they not be added into the game? Starters are fine. Upgrades are bad. We're going to be going through all the different options that Hyrus has for starter items on how they can implement them. I have got four different pathways that they can go. I personally don't really have that much of an opinion with this. I think... All of these have their issues and all of them also have like positives to them. So I think there is a a road that I like what Hyrus does kind of no matter what. I'm not too picky though. I was curious what you guys think. So comment down below before I even get into the video. What do you guys want to happen with starter items? And then I'll kind of go through all these ideas and, and talk about why I think it would be good for this to happen and why I think it could be bad. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. Starting with no starter items at all in this spot Hyros would not have a single starter item. The game would be exactly as it was on the third weekend. Zero starter items, zero starter upgrades, just the base items. The best thing about having no starter items is it keeps build diversity as open as possible. You don't have like, oh, I've got Axe of Animosity. I need attack speed in my build. I need protections in my build. I need a little bit of health to make better use of these protections. But this is like the build I want to itemize with. It makes it so it's not like... You have to create a build around this starter item. It is, I'm just going to create a build around my character, not around this one item that is going to dictate my entire game. I think it makes the tier one items a little less interesting also, if you have no starter items at all. When you have starter items, it's like, in the weakest part of the game that I am as a character, my item is going to dictate a lot more. So it makes these tier one items just less impactful and less interesting. Seeing... You know, 10 intelligence versus 10 strength or whatever it is, protections early game versus, oh, I'm buying this item that's giving me a, a little bit of sustain on my autos and also a little bit of mana return. So instead of, you know, buying this item that's giving me 10 strength, I'll buy this item that's giving me 10 strength and a little bit of sustain for mana and health. And then it's like, which one am I going to go? Okay, obviously the starter item. Like, is there obviously a downside to going that item? Yes, eventually you're going to sell that item if it doesn't have an upgrade. If it has an upgrade, then it goes back to the runes build diversity. So in this no starter items, the positives are a lot of build diversity and it makes the tier ones more interesting. For just having starter items, no upgrades, I think it makes the, the early game easier to digest as a newer player. If I have my support starter, I'm kind of like, okay, this is where I go. This is what I do. This starter item dictates how I play the game. Whether it's selflessness or that, that sh uh, shielding item, the, the new non-sentinels item, that's interesting. It's like, okay, I'm giving a shield to my allies. It makes the, the role make more sense instead of, oh, I'm support. Do I want protections early or strength, intelligence, mana, maybe even a mix with no pots? It just kind of keeps it easier which I think is always going to be a good thing. Starter items, just the base, doesn't really ruin build diversity. It just kind of ruins the tier ones. But having this death toll for early game that you can sell, you're, you're not planning your entire build around this starter item that you're getting at level 20. So it doesn't really affect build diversity much, just the starter items, not the upgrades. So I think that's always fine. The starter items don't scale. It's something you're going to sell in the late game. So it's not like, I have this item in the early game, I'm going to keep it the entire game. In the current system, though, the game is definitely built around these upgrades having seven items. So this will be something that they'd have to change going back to six. But it's still something to talk about. In the third option, starter item upgrades, which is the current iteration of Smite. Starter item upgrades are undoubtedly the most fun part of the build. Now, this is a negative and a positive because when you have these upgrades, if you're just playing the entire game to get to this one spot, I think that is a little unhealthy, especially in Pro League. It kind of made it where... Oh, we're level 18, AFK until 20 to hit our spike. And then it's like, oh, we hit 20, 30 seconds before these guys. We have a massive, massive spike they don't have. Let's go fight now. It, like, it is 100% fun to have your starter item, but it is a volatile thing. Another thing, Smite upgrades uh, or starter item upgrades are kind of an identity of Smite. If you've played Smite 1 for the past, was it four years or something like that? Maybe, maybe three years. Starter items have been in the game for a long time. And these starter item upgrades have been with them. So it's like a, do you want to get rid of this core smite mechanic just because you want to just change it for smite 2? Is it worth it? You know, you never know. A big thing I saw when I asked this question on Twitter was it adds more scaling for smite, which is something that smite has always lacked. Having only six items and then a 500 pot and a 3k pot. 
Now you'll have seven items. One is also like that starter item upgrade. And then you'll also have 3k pots. And then you'll also have more scaling with this new gold fear mechanic. So there's just more and more scaling on smite, which is never a bad thing. I think scaling is a positive. You don't want to become like capped out. And then it's just, oh, 50, 50. Let's see what happens. I think having more potential for scaling, especially as the games go longer, I think that's a positive. A negative that I have that I didn't know where else to add this really was starter items really did become a balanced nightmare because your entire build was built around these items. So it's like my blue stone that I have, I want to optimize my build as perfectly to maximize damage and also becoming unkillable with this blue stone or the same thing with Dest, uh, Dest Embrace or in mid lane with Gemma Focus. Like there, it was a balanced nightmare because your entire build was optimized around just this one item. If you don't have starter item upgrades, the balance becomes a lot easier, I think, from like a high risk point of view. And then the fourth option, which I'm a little iffy with this one. I think this one might be my least favorite, uh, which is maybe surprising to some of you. Having starter items and upgrades, but the upgrades have no stats. So it's just pure, I get this passive. Now, you think about that and it sounds really good. I think what that does is that's just taking away from like the aspects that Hyros has been adding. The aspects are the thing that you purchase at the beginning of the game that give you value. The, the thing that they could do is they could actually mix these together, the starter item upgrades and the aspects to have 20 different aspects and you can choose two maybe or 20 different aspects, choose three. And that's how like your character is going to play and you can kind of build around that. It doesn't then become just which one is the most broken. That's wise it's which one is the most broken with my character. Uh, and I don't have to change up my entire build to maximize this item. I can just kind of build my entire build, have my aspects, and then have my character and have them all kind of mesh together really good. Which I said I didn't like this one very much, but now that I kind of pictured it like making it so it's like aspects and upgrades together... That's kind of interesting. Just a st base starter item and then aspects and upgrades are combined. And those are your two different systems. Hey, maybe I talked myself into that as I, I like that one also. But yeah, those are the four options. No starter items or upgrades. Starter item, no upgrade. Starter items and upgrades. And then starter items and upgrades, but no stats on those upgrades. Let me know down below what you guys think about the starter items after listening to the video. Do you have an opinion on one that you want to see? I know this is something that is very, very split in the Smite community, but I'm interested to know what you guys have to say. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have watched our I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.